All right, I'm going to go down a little crazy tangent here just for fun. And you can see my robot would destroy itself by its red cautionary marks. But uh, really, I'm just throwing this in there now because, you know, this is the type of thing that surprises you when you're working away in Grasshopper, some of these plugins and videos that you see online. I have to admit, this one came from uh, just getting lost in Carl Singlein's type stuff, of what he does online and, and following his tutorials. Very exciting. So we're basically looking at the uh, PRC. It's it's one of the last nodes in uh, uh, primitives. It's, uh, sorry, primitive uh, param parameters, uh, KUKA PRC command. And that works by, I downloaded from their free online trial, a uh, script that takes two curves, locks them together, kind of finds a surface, follows a weave pattern, uh, curve to polyline, that's where the robot's going to follow. And then all of a sudden you start getting into these components when you download all these wonderful KUKA components and everything. And uh, you're going to figure out that you're going to need a certain list of commands. And that's where that, uh, that's where that little uh, thing comes in handy. You might need it and you might not to list the whole series of commands that you plug into a tool. You then can pull in a robot and you can see right here on this one it's saying, uh, not on this page, but if I bring it over, I might be able to see it. Yeah, there you go. This component is only available for valid license. Well, I haven't spent any money on it. So that said, that's a fun little exercise and I play with it, but I like, um, just going in and finding things like, uh, robots and kook is like one thing, but there's another plugin called robots, which is pretty outstanding because what happens with that is you can, uh, if I go out of here and leave this just on, uh, take that preview off for a second. You can say in here, I can go in and virtually grab any robot I want around the world in any lab. And I mean, this is a piece of geometry worth just playing with. So jump in here and grab another one. And you'll see it changes. Grab another one. Uh, these are all articulated meshes that can be brought in. And I've been taking some in the Fologram AR Spark. Like I said, just grabbing the uh, skeleton as a uh, mesh or borrowing that is just like borrowing a robot. Now, in doing so, I went in and I found a script that uh, I think I followed along with. Uh, it must have been an online source. I don't even recall where I ended up build, building it. But uh, let's leave that KUKA script and all those little other little guys that are there. Turn them off. And uh, I don't even need these curves. Uh, we can swap those out for what I had. And I think I had a curve in here, but I don't even think I ended up needing it. My script was all set up here. You know, have a look. Uh, preview on. And we've got this big robot and I've got this program curve that I came in and dealt with evaluating a curve that I built. Um, pretty sure that would be it. Uh, sometimes it's good to take off this thing. Um, let's extract that curve and see where we have it. Uh, I believe it's that curve. It should be in there somewhere. Um, needless to say, it's been a while since I looked at it. With that curve set up going through those evaluate uh, planar surfaces. We'll put this on so you can see everything as I click through it. Uh, there is a polygon form for sweeping this kind of uh, object. And so this is, I guess, the geometry of what's being milled. Um, I evaluate surface and come up with a series of planes on it. I deconstruct those planes and I find their surface normals and I put it into the Orient Coca PRC. And there we go. You've got your commands PRC that would run down through here and into that item. And that would be a spot to put your uh, param uh, KUKA PRC command line. You can pop it in there and then pop it in there. It should not disturb the script. Now, I'm looking down here, and I had this running pretty well, but I was having trouble with the KUKA robot. So, or I guess it is a Carl Singline one. I actually got it up and running without the license. So, same thing here. It should give me the same warning that I need it. But I had it set up. Oh, it was... It was very strange, like on the recent downloads of KUKA, I remember this, I was having trouble finding the KUKA PRC play. Well, I just cut and pasted that from a script I had before. I'm glad I didn't get rid of it, but I'm allowed to play it. And in playing it, I'm, at, I'm able to pull in those KUKA robots and see how they follow their paths. And you can see that red, that that would be not only a danger to probably everybody in the room, which is why I can't afford and neither am trusted to play in robotics, but I have actually taken this put it into ARC, played with Firefly, and reenacted Macbeth as he walks down the hallway and says, is this a dagger I see before me? And of course, I put the dagger in the hands as a tool uh, instead of uh, this tool, uh, this geometry of what was in there. And you can see I just use a standard mesh. Uh, if I turn this off, I'm just using a little tiny mesh as a tool. So if you actually wanted to see what was at the end of that, we could crank up the uh, radius of this, and that's going to put it on the end of the tool. And we'll have this uh, kind of sphere bouncing around on the end of it. Probably not in the correct spot. 
let me just upsize that. There it is. You see the sphere on the end of the tool. So I can put anything there as a geometry. I can put that skeleton. And you can have a lot of fun and creative fun with this. And, you know, like I said, nobody's going to trust me to these machines as creative robotics. I have some ideas about it. I would definitely need to work with programmers and people that are, you know, invested in this type of equipment. But I am just thrilled that I can kind of conceive of the potential of these programs as you go in and what they may end up doing. So I'm going to throw them into a group again. Uh, I don't have it figured out, but I definitely am happy with what's happening in this. And so that's it. That's just a node for why you would end up wanting to have uh, this information. Everything's kind of open source online. You can get in there, uh, dig deep into what you want to do. You can change geometries. And uh, yeah, it's a very playful thing. Whatever you can think you can do and uh, good or bad, whatever you can think you can do. So I find this pretty happy. And uh, going in here and uh, I think double clicking um, the PRC settings, you've got to get in, you've got to figure out how to analyze the end of your tools. You see my whole path is full of red, like do not run this in a real room. And I get that enough to know where my limitations are and uh, what resources I have. But, you know, in this sense of simulation, I think I'm pretty good to just be playful. Six minutes of playing with uh, the inspiring going into params and seeing this little item down here that you always wondered, you know, what, what's that good for? The KUKA PRC uh, uh, Parametric Robotic Control Command. Anyway, we're going to go into something a little less about something I use more, but a little less exciting than I think this robot with a knife on the end of it. Um, and uh, we'll just keep going with it. So thanks very much for watching. Actually, I am tempted in the minutes we have left to just grab a, uh, a skeletal mesh and just throw it on the end of this robot for fun to have the interaction. But I'll leave that for another time. Thanks for watching.